So now let's look at the solution to the first problem. We know that in order to use the forward Euler method for both the populations of fish 1 and fish 2, we need to know how each population changes with time. I've written out expressions for f1 dot and f2 dot, showing the time derivatives of each population. Now in each equation, we can see that this first term is in the form of the logistic growth function that I showed you in the question introduction video. We have a growth rate and then 1 minus the population over the carrying capacity times the population again, and the same thing up here. So these first terms show the positive rate of change of the population. However, each equation also has a second part tacked onto it that shows a negative rate of change. This expresses how each population is harvested by the fishermen. As we said earlier, P is the fraction of the fish that we catch that are of fish type 2, or the green fish. We know then that the rate of harvesting of the green type of fish is going to be P times our total harvest rate. We can maintain the same total harvest rate if we make the coefficient in front of the harvest rate in the equation for the red fish 1 minus p. Now remember, we're trying to prevent the green fish from going extinct. So this means that we need to create a situation in which the rate of change of population 2 is greater than or equal to 0. If we rearrange the equation for f2 dot, we should end up with this term, which is showing how the population can gain fish, should be greater than or equal to this term which is showing how the population can lose fish. The value of p that we're trying to calculate, however, is the exact threshold of extinction. So this is going to happen where growth exactly equals harvesting. In other words, if there were any more harvesting or any less growth, population 2 would become extinct eventually. This graph over here, like you've seen before, has a blue curve that shows how the growth rate changes with population and also has a red curve that represents harvesting rate. Now this first red line is just an example of a harvest rate. But the one that we're interested in is this dotted red line up here, which just touches the maximum of the growth curve. You might remember that this point on the growth curve is also known as the maximum sustainable yield. You can see that if we move the red line any higher, then the harvesting rate will always exceed the growth rate, and we will definitely end up with an extinct fish 2 population. Similarly, if we move anywhere else on the blue line, the growth rate will again be below this harvest rate, and we will begin to deplete the population of fish 2. Right in the center, however, we have a point of semi-stable equilibrium, just like Jorn talked about in the unit. Any tiny bit that the population moves to the left side of the curve will result in it eventually falling all the way down to zero, which clearly means that fish 2 has become extinct. If instead we have a slightly larger population than 5 times 10 to the 5th tons, we will again start to see a decrease in population. And if, by chance, the population does not stop at exactly this maximum point, it will fall to the other side of the curve and also become extinct. Remember, all of this is assuming that the harvesting rate is exactly at this dotted line. So now we need to find what value of p will place the dotted line right at this position. Again, at this point, we have growth rate exactly equal to harvesting rate. So I've taken the two parts of the equation for f2 dot and written them as equal to each other right here. If we plug in the proper value for f2, which we know is 5 times 10 to the 5th tons, then we can solve using simple algebra for the threshold value of p which equals 0.375. Finally, looking at our code, you can see that first we've plugged in the value for p that we just calculated, 0.375. And down here in the for loop, we have a very simple translation of the equations that we created for the growth rates of both fish 1 and fish 2 and the spots for the rate of change of either population. So for fish 1, we have this, and for fish 2, we have this. As always, these rates of change are multiplied by h, the step size, and added to the initial values for either fish population. Now let's run the program and see what we get. So here is our plot. The blue line plots the population of fish that we're interested in harvesting, measured in tons, and the green line plots the population of the second type of fish, which we're trying to prevent from going extinct. You can see that we have maintained a high level of population of the fish that we're interested in, and we've also prevented the green line from going down to zero. You can see that as time increases, the slope of this line is approaching zero, which means that if we plotted time going even further out, no matter how far out in time we decided to plot these curves, this green line would never approach zero. Just for fun, let's see what happens if we set p equal to 0.5. Well, this graph looks very different from the last one that we had. By just increasing p by a third of its former value, we've made fish population 2 go extinct in just over 20 years. Since we're harvesting more of fish 2 and less of fish 1, the fish 1 population has actually risen to a value that is higher than it was in the last plot, but we violated our first main objective, which was to prevent fish 2 from going extinct. I hope this problem has helped you cement your understanding of logistic growth, harvesting, and equilibria.